Hey, thanks for joining us here at Christ Church. If it's your first time with us, or if you just want to get to know more about our church, you can check us out online at ChristChurchFW.com. Also, make sure you're following us on Instagram and Facebook to stay in the loop. While you're online, subscribe to our YouTube channel for fresh new content to get you through your week. Now, uh, my name's Garris. For those of you I have not met, welcome. Welcome to Christ Church today. We are honored that you would join us. Welcome for those of you watching us online. We're always honored when God brings friends to worship with us. Uh, if this happens to be your first time with us this year, we're in this series called Breakthrough. And uh, we felt like this was a word that God gave us for 2020. And uh, we ask our church family to prayerfully consider joining us on a 21-day fast. And today is actually day 21. Uh, yeah, so a lot of folks are excited about chocolate cake later today, okay? Uh, but anyway, we, we have been fasting, and uh, some people don't understand that, and some people go like, okay, what, what does that mean? Well, to fast means that we disconnect from something that we really like in order to connect in a more intimate way with God. And uh, we, we aren't doing that. We aren't fasting because we're super spiritual or we're super saints. We're fasting because we're desperate. I want you to understand that. We are fasting because we're desperate because we don't want another year like last year. We believe God's got something new for our lives, for our families, and for our future. And so that's why we have been fasting. And when we kicked off this 21 days, we felt like God really was challenging us to conclude it with a time of celebration. And so tonight at 5 o'clock, everybody say 5 o'clock. At 5 o'clock right here, we're bringing all of our church family together and we're going to have a time of praise and worship, a time of waiting on God, a time of allowing the Holy Spirit to speak. And we are believing for miracles and breakthrough to take place. Now, I don't think he has to wait till 5 o'clock because I think he's going to do some of it this morning. But we're going to get the appetizer for the main course this evening, all right? So with that being said, let me just pause. I, I, during this 21 days, we have been so excited about, about all the testimonies that have been coming in. In fact, this week we opened up a new email account. And, and for all of you that have had God answer a prayer, I'd love to ask you to, to let us know about that. And the best way I know how is just send us an email. And the email is real simple. It's breakthrough at ChristChurchFW.com. Breakthrough at ChristChurchFW.com. And, and that's going to stay up there. And you guys can just email us and say, hey, this is what God. And for you, you may think, oh, this is small or this is big, whatever. It doesn't matter. We just want to hear what God is doing in our church family so we can celebrate that together. And everybody said, amen. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we, we come before the altar of God. We thank you for what you've already done today. We thank you for your presence that's already been present with us throughout this weekend and throughout our various services and Bible classes and everything else going on. Holy Spirit, I thank you for the testimonies you brought to this body because of people who are hungry for you. Holy Spirit, I, I declare with my mouth that you are our teacher and you are our guide. So would you take these next few moments, would you quicken my mind to be able to think clearly, my mouth to speak clearly, help me convey that which is from God, and Holy Spirit, would you block out anything that of Darius would get in the way. Lord, I pray for every man and woman, young man and young lady that are listening to me today. I pray that God, every person, would have a personal encounter with God today. Through the worship, through your word, through the prayer time, may we encounter you. For I ask that in Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed said, Amen. Amen. Okay? If you have your handouts this morning, you may want to just jot these thoughts down. I have four thoughts that I'm going to share on the subject of breakthrough. And these are things that the Holy Spirit has been teaching me as we have gone through these last two, three weeks now of our time of prayer and fasting. Now, if you don't like to do it by writing, you can actually do it electronically on the YouVersion app. There, our notes are there as well. The first thought is this. Breakthrough often involves a physical act. 
a physical act. Understand that that is sometimes illogical and sometimes it doesn't make sense. Sometimes it even seems foolish that what we do in the physical would have any impact on what occurs in the spirit realm. See, we understand as followers of Jesus Christ that we are children of God and we live in a physical world. We contact our physical world through our senses, taste, touch, smell, see, hear. The spirit realm is, is a little more weird to us sometimes because we can't reach out and touch it. We can't with our physical eyes see what is going on there, but the spirit realm is very, very real. And in the way that God in his sovereignty chose to set things up, God has allowed actions that you and I do in the physical realm to have an impact on the spirit realm, which in turn brings back action to the physical realm. Now, there are several illustrations in the Bible, but let me take a moment to just share one with you, one of my favorite, and it's in Exodus chapter 17. I remember when I was just a child, back in the old days, I know this is real old for some of you, but we used to have flannel graph boards. Anybody remember the flannel graph boards? Three of us in the room. Come on now. Y'all aren't that young. There we go. And, and I remember my teacher teaching me the story of Moses and Aaron and her. And, and here's the story. Moses was leading the children of Israel across the wilderness to the promised land. And they came through the land of the Amalekites. And the Amalekites get ticked off that these two billion people are walking through their land. And so they bring out their army to attack the children of Israel. And Moses, being the leader of the children of Israel, gets an instruction from God. And Moses goes up on a hill overlooking the valley where the battle is going to be fought. And Moses sends Joshua with the army down in the valley. But up on the hill, away from the battle, is Moses with the, the shepherd's staff, the rod of God. And Moses holds up the rod of God. And the Bible says that as long as he holds up the rod physical act, Joshua and the children of Israel are winning the battle. But when his arms get tired, which is going to happen, right? Our bodies are get physically tired. And as his arms come down, the Amalekites start to win. And so there's this guy named Aaron and this other guy named Hur, it's H-U-R by the way, who decide to help Moses out. And it's a great story about how we need each other. And so they bring this boulder over and they have Moses sit down and Aaron gets on one side, Hur gets on the other, and they hold up his arms. And the two of them are just holding up their, his arms while he's holding up the rod. And the Bible says because he held up the rod, Joshua and the children of Israel win the war. And after the battle is over, God tells Moses, now go tell Joshua what happened. Because Joshua's a young man and Joshua needs to understand what went on. And so Moses tells Joshua, hey, I've got some news for you. This is Darius's translation. I, I got some news for you. I know you're kind of tired and a little bloody and you got a few bruises, but the real battle wasn't won down here. The real battle was won up there. And I can imagine Joshua going, uh, excuse me? Do you realize how much I've been fighting down here? And Moses says, no. When I held up the rod, you were able to win. Come on now. The physical act up here brought a breakthrough in the spirit realm that brought a breakthrough into the physical realm and brought about the victory. And sometimes God invites us to do something physical that may seem foolish or insignificant, but is crucial in the realm of the spirit. For instance... You come into a worship service and you stand there going, well, you know, if they sing my song, then I'll get into it. But if they don't, I'm just going to stand here today. Come on. What happens when we make a physical choice to say, whatever they sing, I'm going to sing and worship God. I'm going to clap my hands and I'm going to lift my hands. And I'm maybe even going to dance a little bit. And if I, the Lord, I may even kneel before the Lord in humility before God. A physical act that releases something in the spirit realm that brings a breakthrough back where I am. Amen. See, never count a physical act as foolish or insignificant. Because your breakthrough may be one physical act away. 
Come on, for some of you, it may be a physical act of just starting to pay your tithes. That wasn't even on my notes. That was extra. Okay. Your breakthrough often involves a physical act. Why? Because physical acts release spiritual breakthrough. Here's number two. Breakthrough includes revelation. Everybody say revelation. I'm not talking about the book in the Bible. What I'm talking about when I say revelation, when we begin to fast and pray, when we begin to push into God, when we begin to seek God with all of our hearts, I'm going to tell you what happens because God made us a promise in the word. God says, if you seek me, you will find me. So if you start to seek after God, you're going to find God. And you know what you're going to find out about God? You're going to find out the goodness of God, the greatness of God, and the holiness of God. Y'all aren't near as excited as you should be. In Isaiah chapter 6, the nation of Israel is going through a very difficult time. They're under the judgment of God. And Isaiah, this man, begins to seek after God. And as a result of Isaiah seeking after God, in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1, he says, I saw the Lord. And then he begins to unwrap what he saw. He said he was high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And the angels were singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. He gets a revelation of the holiness, the goodness, the greatness of God. But there's a second revelation that comes too. Because the moment we see the holiness of God and the character of God, we get another revelation, and that is of how far we are from what God originally meant for us to be. I call it, we get to see our mess. You see, human nature is, we mostly compare ourselves with other flawed humans. And sometimes we feel most comfortable hanging around the most flawed because then we don't feel so bad about our flaws. Come on now. We look at somebody around us and go, well, you know, I'm not near as messed up as Christy, so I'm okay. (laughs) You know, I come to church a whole lot more than Joe does, so I must be good. But the truth of the matter is, no place in the scripture do I compare myself with other people. I compare myself with God, and in comparison with Him, I'm a mess. And that's what happened to Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 6, you get to verse 5. After he describes what he sees in the glory and the goodness and the greatness of God, Isaiah says, Woe to me, for I am ruined. I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the people of unclean lips. What's he saying? Isaiah is saying, I'm a mess. I don't have a chance. You see, the revelation that we get of God is never to defeat us or condemn us, but it is to drive us to the grace of God. To drive us to the grace of God. God's not here to show you simply how bad you are. He's here to show you how good you can be with his grace. Oh, that's powerful. Because see, John chapter 1, the gospel of John. John says, light has come into the world. But the sad thing is, men loved darkness rather than light. Because when they came to the light... The light revealed their sin. Some people are afraid to fast and pray and seek God because if they start seeking God, they're going to realize the changes that need to be made in their life. But I'm going to tell you, if you get serious about this, you're going to begin to discover the things in your life that need to change so that you can experience the fullness of God's will in your life. That's what it is. Yeah. I, now, I'll, okay. Yeah. I, I, I'll just give you a personal illustration, okay? Uh, last Monday was a holiday at our office, so I had the day off, so I, I was invited to play golf with uh, some guy, ministry guys, some friends, and they're all pastors and ministry leaders, and so 
we were we had a good time playing golf and came home and thought nothing about it and went to bed and, and went to sleep and I slept really hard and I woke up in the middle of the night wide awake and I, I was so wide awake I thought boy it must be morning but it was still really dark so I looked at my watch and I punched a little button so it would light up and it was 1 36 a.m. remember that 1 36 I thought okay well, why am I waking up at 1 36 so I'm laying in bed in the dark and I'm going okay God are you trying to get my attention what's up and I hadn't hardly got those words out of my mouth just whispering because I didn't want to wake up Cindy and and immediately there was a little tape that started running in my mind and it was a tape about a conversation I had with those guys that afternoon and in the conversation we were talking about some other ministry and as I'm listening to the tape I in my mind I, I hear the words that I had said that afternoon and as I'm listening to myself I suddenly am convicted that I have jealousy in my heart about that ministry I mean it was like a, a, a weight suddenly on my chest and God didn't have to really say anything I just said oh God I'm so sorry and I began to lay in bed asking God to forgive me and to cleanse me of my jealousy because here's what I know God can't bless me if I'm jealous of somebody else's blessing come on not only did I ask God to forgive me of my jealousy I started praying for that other ministry and the people involved by name and asking God to bless them why because I got a revelation there's a part of me that needs to change if God wants to put blessing on my life when you push into God you're not only going to get a revelation of his goodness greatness and his holiness you're going to get a revelation of what needs to change here so that we can be the person God created us to be see God wants to work in your life sin in your life will always hinder the work of God in your life and everybody said amen. amen number three third thing I'm realizing is that breakthrough is not a reason for a breakup great science breakthrough is not a reason for a breakup now let me explain this to you an illustration several years ago we had a couple that came into the church met with Cindy and I and they were in desperate situation I mean desperate situation uh, according to their own words they told us that they were about 60 days away from being totally bankrupt as a family behind on their house payment behind on their vehicle payments they owned a business business that had some difficult times lost some money uh, they discovered they had a the IRS had put a tax lien on them I mean they were literally 60 days away from losing everything they had and they asked us to pray with them and we began to pray with them we got them involved in Financial Peace University our Financial Peace University team met with them personally, helped them come up with a budget and a, develop a game plan with them. They immediately started tithing. They started coming to prayer meeting. They were in every church service. They were just hungry for God. And over the next six months, I watched God do miracle after miracle after miracle for this couple. I mean, just breakthrough. Just, they got favor, believe it or not, with the IRS. They got money that came in from someplace totally unexpected. They got contracts they weren't expecting. One thing led to another thing, one to another thing led to another thing. Within six months, God had literally turned their whole life around. And they were so exuberant and they were sharing the testimony. And, and life went on and about a year later, they were doing so well. They were able to go buy themselves a lake house and a boat and be able to have a place to go, enjoy everything. And guess what happened? All of a sudden, they weren't around so much anymore. Their breakthrough became a breakup in their relationship with God. Because anytime you seek the reward over the rewarder, you will lose. Come on. Oh, I've seen it happen in different ways. I've had people come to Cindy and I and they want us to pray with them. They'll get a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a husband or a wife. And, 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 and man, they're just in there and they're just praying and they're just seeking for it. And all of a sudden they get somebody and then they start dating and then they start doing this and doing that. And, and all of a sudden 
they're breaking up with God. Don't allow your breakthrough or your blessing to become a distraction. Don't seek the reward, seek the rewarder. Don't settle for just the favor of God or the gifts of God. No, seek the presence of God. Seek the presence. We're not after God's hand. We're after the heart of God. Let me say, we're not after the hand of God. after the heart of God. This is big business. It, now, you, you may say, oh, oh, pastor, that's, no, that's very biblical. Because if you go to the Old Testament, the book of Judges, I don't have time to develop it all, but let me just tell you what happens. you got a group of people who get into the promised land, and they build their homes, plant their crops, raise their flocks, and they become prosperous. And when they get prosperous, they get complacent. And when they get complacent, they rebel against God. Idolatry comes into their life. And guess what happens? When you forget God, then judgment comes. And when judgment comes, they get desperate and they repent. And when they repent, here comes more blessing. And when they get blessed, they become complacent. And they get complacent. And guess what happens? Rebellion, judgment, repentance. It's a cycle. I'm challenging us, Christ Church. Don't ever get complacent in your relationship with God. Let's choose, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to push into God. God's got more for you. God's got more for your family, more for your job, more for your children, more for your finances, more of Him in your life. Oh, let's push in. Oh, let's, let's don't stop this thing, man. Let's don't just say, okay, I got my breakthrough, now I'm done. No, there's another breakthrough tomorrow. Why? Because the Bible says the mercies of God are new every morning. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, God's got something new he wants to do in you and through you. God's got somebody in your life that needs to experience his power and his life, and he's going to bless you so you can bless them. This is good. Oh, don't let your breakthrough become a breakup. Let's go to number four. Breakthrough. Oh, I, this is tough. I don't like number four. But it's true. Breakthrough may not happen on our timeline. Anybody in the room ever discover that? Yeah, I'll raise both hands. You see, there have been more than one time in my life that I thought God had to do it by next Tuesday. And Tuesday comes and Tuesday goes and God hadn't done it. And when God doesn't do something on our timeline, we have a choice to make, don't we? We can get mad at God because God's just not very loving. And then we hear about somebody else getting their breakthrough and we go, well, he didn't do it for me. Come on. Or... The enemy can make us think that the reason we didn't get our breakthrough is because there's something wrong with us. And we've messed up or we didn't pray right or maybe we didn't fast the right fast. Or we didn't pray the right prayer. But here's what the Bible says. The Bible says God's ways aren't our ways and God's thoughts aren't our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are bigger than our thoughts. And here's what, one thing I've learned about God in my 63 years. Okay, are you ready for this? Looking back... God's never been late. Now, when you're in the middle of it, it kind of feels like, God, you got to do something today. But when you get over here and you look back over there, you realize that God always brought the answer at the exact right moment. Because you thought you were ready for it, but you really weren't. Come on now. You thought you had to have it today, and God says, <clears throat> I got a different plan. Yeah, but God, I like my plan. I like my calendar. My to do list is for Tuesday morning. God, bring breakthrough. Didn't you read the list? And sometimes we just have to give God our list, and we give God our calendar. And we say, God, I'm not going to make you work on my schedule, but I'm going to yield me to you. 
Come on. You know, we didn't call this the month of breakthrough. We called this the year of breakthrough. We're not here just believing that everybody's going to get their miracle in the month of January. No, we're believing some are going to get in January, some in February, some in March. But guess what? We're going to do what Jesus told us to do in Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, Jesus says, keep on asking and you will get what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will get. Keep on knocking and you will get. What are we going to do? We're going to keep asking. And we're going to keep seeking. And we're going to keep knocking. And we're going to keep asking. And we're going to keep knocking. And we're going to keep seeking. Because we believe God's timing is when he's going to release it. Now, I'll just tell you where we got this whole idea to start with. It's in Daniel chapter 10. In Daniel chapter 10, there's this guy named Daniel who's actually a refugee in a foreign country. Because his nation had experienced the judgment of God. And because they had experienced the judgment of God, he had been taken over to Babylon. And while he's over there in Babylon, Daniel commits to stay true to God. And as he gets up in his older years, Daniel begins to seek after God. And in Daniel chapter 10, Daniel says that he went on a fast for 21 days. And it's an amazing story. Because on the 21st day, after hearing absolutely nothing from God... God sends him an angel. And the angel greets him this amazing way. The angel says, greetings, Daniel. You are highly favored of God. How many of you would love to hear an angel say that to you? Come on. You are highly favored of God. Now, it's interesting because in the Hebrew, that word favored is the same word in the earlier part of Daniel chapter 10. When it says that Daniel went on a fast and he ate no favorable food. So I I, I was reading that the other day and it just just hit me. Daniel gave up what he loved in order to get more loved by God. Now we don't get more loved by God because we understand God loves us, but we do get more favor from God. Oh, this is good. So the angel says, Daniel, you who are highly favored of God. You ready for this? On the first day that you prayed, God sent me with the answer. The first day. God didn't send it on day 20 or 21. God sent it the first day. But the angel said, what happened, Daniel, is between heaven and earth, there was a spiritual war going on. Come on, that's what Paul talks about, isn't it? We don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers, authorities, and spiritual darkness in the heavenly realms. The angel said there was a spiritual battle going on, and it took me 21 days to get it down here to you. Now, just imagine a moment how sad it would have been if Daniel would have quit after day 10. What if Daniel would have said, you know, I've already prayed about that for 15 days, God. It's not happening, so I'm just going to quit. I'm tired of praying. I'm tired of asking. I'm tired of seeking. I'm tired of knocking. What would have happened if he quit on day 20? You see, I don't want to get to heaven and find there's a warehouse of undelivered answers. Because I stopped praying before they got delivered here. It took him 21 days to get his breakthrough. Some people, it takes two months. Some takes 21 years. Are you willing to ask until the answer comes? That's what I want at Christ Church. I want us to be a church body of people who are going to believe God. We're going to fight in the realm of the spirit. We're going to pray. We're going to intercede. We're going to come to five o'clock prayer times. We're going to come and worship you and believe you. We're going to gather together and we're going to see heaven open up the windows of heaven, pour out so much blessing that we are going to be able to receive all of it. We're going to see it happen. Why? Because we're asking and keeping asking. We're seeking and keeping seeking. We're knocking and we're going to keep on knocking until the answer comes. Now, here's what I'm going to ask you to do with me a moment. I want you to think a moment. You see, I think today, even as I have been talking, some of you have realized your need for the grace of God. Maybe during the worship, as we were worshiping God, you you had a sense of God's presence in this place. 
and you knew right away you're not in the right place with God. That's part of that revelation I talked about a moment ago. Here's what you need to know is that God loved you so much that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in Jesus would not perish but could have everlasting life. You see, God the Father sent his son Jesus down to earth wrapped in human flesh and Jesus lived a sinless life. And at the end of his life, humanity took him and nailed him to a cross. And he hung willingly on that cross, not for his sins, but for mine and yours. Because there was this divine exchange that took place. The Bible says God took my sins and your sins, lumped them all together, and he put them on Jesus on the cross. And he died to pay the price for our sins. And the same God took the righteousness of Jesus and he makes it available to you and to me. And he says, whoever will believe in me can have my righteousness. That's an act of grace. See, we don't become a part of the family of God because we're so good or we pray enough or we come to church. No, we become a part of the family of God because we believe that Jesus died for us and that he rose again victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And you and I today get to be a part of God's family. So I'm going to ask you to bow your heads all over the room this morning. And as we bow our heads, would you just whisper a prayer and say, God, what are you saying to me? If you're watching me online, why don't you spray that same prayer? God, what are you saying to me? There are some of you in this room right now. You need to ask Jesus to be your Savior and to be your Lord. You know there's sin that's separating you from the will and the plan of God. So with our heads bowed, I'd love to give a very simple invitation for those who would say to me, Pastor Darius, today, I want Jesus to be in charge of my life. I believe he died for me and I want to accept that divine exchange, my sin for his righteousness. If that's you right now, would you just lift up a hand and say, here, Pastor, include me in this prayer. Come on, don't be ashamed. There it is. Thank you. 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 Way up there. I see those way in the back, way up there. I see them. God's seeing them, hands raised all over this room. Thank you so much. You may put those down. Now, one more time, some of you, if you were going to be honest, you know you should have raised your hands with those others, but you didn't. I want to give you one more chance to say, okay, pastor, I need that grace right now. Go ahead. Hold it up there. Say, yeah. Oh, come on. (laughs) What beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. You can put those down. I want to ask everybody in the room to stand with me. There's a miracle that's about to happen in the next 60 seconds. Because the Bible says when we confess with our mouth and we believe in our heart, we shall be saved. It's the greatest miracle that will ever happen. So what we're about to do is we're going to pray a prayer together. I'm going to lead us and I'm going to ask everybody in this room to speak these words with your mouth. Those of you that lifted your hand, maybe it's been a long time or maybe you've never talked to God before. But God is in this moment listening to you. God's grace is getting ready to pour into your life. Your future is about to be different because of this moment. Would you join me, everyone together? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come in Jesus' name. I confess I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. Today, I ask Jesus to forgive me cleanse me and to be the Lord of my life. Holy Spirit, fill me up. Teach me. Guide me. In 
Jesus' name. Now, Father God, I pray for my friends who just spoke those words, and I pray across this room, every chain of sin to be broken. I pray for every man and boy, every young man and every young lady. God, I pray that this morning you would give them the courage to step to one of our prayer partners in just a moment and to confirm with their mouth what you have done right now in their heart. God, I pray that you will motivate them to take their next step, filling out that card and letting someone agree with them today. I speak that in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I want everybody to look at me right here. Our prayer partners are already moving to the sides of the room. One of our core values here at Christ Church is that we value encountering God. Every part of this morning has been orchestrated to lead us to this moment. Because we believe the primary way we encounter God is through prayer. When we take a physical act to walk over to a prayer partner and to tell them what God is doing in our lives or what we need God to do. You see, these people standing on the side, they're, they're not perfect people, but they are people who believe that prayer works, who believe that God is listening. Scores of you across this room lifted your hands. I'm going to ask you to be the leaders. If you were serious about it, to just walk up to one of the prayer partners and say, today, I'm committing my life to Christ. Let them pray with you. Others of you here this morning, you need a miracle. You need a breakthrough, whether it's physical or financial or relational or spiritual or mental, emotional, whatever it is. The Bible says God's answer, if we're in trouble, is to pray. So, Lord, I just speak right now courage that you will move us from our comfort zone. Move us, Lord, with a desperate attitude to seek you in prayer today. Anoint our prayer partners today with gifts of the Spirit, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, gifts of faith, of miracles, of healing, of discernment, and of prophecy. Let them be used to speak to your children. I ask that in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Our altars are open. Thanks so much for joining us on Christchurch Online. If you like today's message, please feel free to hit the like button or drop a comment letting us know what God said to you. If you've got a family member or a friend that would really enjoy today's message, please feel free to share it with them. Also become a subscriber of the Christchurch FW YouTube page so you know about all the new content we put out. What we'd really love is we'd love for you to come and visit us. Be a part of our weekend worship experience. Go to ChristchurchFW.com and see all of our service times and upcoming events. We can't wait to meet you.